morning children so today we are going to discuss the second chapter of chemistry that is is matter around us pure so already we have discussed the first chapter in chemistry that is matter in our surrounding so in this chapter we have already learned that what is the what is matter what are the examples of the matter in which states matter can exist and uh, the some characteristics of matter that already we have discussed in the previous chapter so in this chapter actually we have the various types of matter okay so first of all matter is made up of into small small particles very tiny particles and this matter can be divided into two parts one is pure substances another one is impure substances so here you can see that the substance matter it is having two parts one is pure substance only one substance is present and another one is impure substance when more than one kind of substances when it is present so in case of pure substance pure substances are generally elements are com and compounds so elements means an element is the simplest or the basic form of a pure substance which cannot be broken into anything simpler than it by physical or chemical method so you can say that element which is present in alone the substance which are present in alone they all are called elements and it is the basic form of the pure substance we cannot break them into more smaller smaller substances that is called element okay so as for example we can say metals non metals and metalloids they all are elements so in case of metal we know the characteristics of metal that it is having the shiny property ductile in nature they are malleable in nature because they can be drawn into thin uh, wire they can be drawn into thin sheets also they can be hammered into thin sheets so this kind of nature so they are in case of metals so as for example we can say various type of metals are there that iron copper aluminum zinc sodium potassium they all are called metal okay but they are one uh, two exceptional thing it is there this is another part because i just told you that metal it is uh, shiny in nature it is lustrous and also you can say that metal generally exist in solid state at the room temperature it is hard in nature but sometimes it is shown that in case of mercury mercury is also a metal but still it exist in liquid state in room temperature we use mercury in thermometer that is liquid form of the metal right in case of suppose uh, you can say that so many metals are there iron iron is very hard in nature but in general cases the metal is having some metallic property like they are hard in nature they are solid state they are existing in solid state at our room temperature next we can say that they are lustrous they are having like shiny property they are ductile they are malleable like that because aluminum wire copper wire we use for the conduction of heat and electricity so metals are good conductor of heat and electricity so this kind of metals are there okay so all the metals like iron fe fe is element okay in case of sodium na na is an element in case of potassium k k is an element okay in case of copper cu cu is an element so whenever they are not combined with another element just they are present in alone they are called metals as well as they are called pure substances and pure substances they also non metals are there in case of carbon in case of oxygen in case of nitrogen so that means non metals who are the non metals 
the substances which can exist at our room temperature in the gaseous state mainly and they are very soft in nature they do not have any metallic luster they do not have any uh, that kind of ductile malleability property so these kind of elements are called non metals carbon hydrogen nitrogen oxygen they all are non metals because they can exist only in the generally in the gaseous form i told you so many examples are there according to non metallic property of the non metals but still we have some exception like carbon it is it can be formed in the solid state in case of suppose diamond diamond is present in solid state and diamond is is a made up of by carbon atom so as carbon is non metal so diamond should be non metal but it is very much hard in nature like metal okay so i told you that in case of metal metals are good conductor of heat and electricity but sometime uh, it is uh, shown that in case of non metals like graphite it is also a good conductor of electricity and diamond is a good conductor of heat so so many exceptional cases are there but they are having some property like non metal okay so they are also called the pure substances and in case of metalloids metalloids means those who are having both of the some metallic property as well as non metallic property as for example arsenic antimony germanium they all are called non metals now i am coming to compound compound is a substance containing two or more elements which are combined together in a fixed ratio or fixed proportion by mass suppose in case of carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is a compound co2 is the uh, formula of the carbon dioxide so the mass ratio of the carbon is is to oxygen it is same from wherever we can get the carbon dioxide we can get the carbon dioxide from air we can get the carbon dioxide from dissociation of calcium carbonate so from wherever we can get the carbon dioxide the ratio of mixing of two or more elements it will be same not only carbon dioxide in case of water h2o the ratio of hydrogen and oxygen it is 2 is to 1 and the mass ratio of hydrogen that is 2 is to 16 this ratio will be same for all of the h2o molecules that i am saying okay so they also are called pure substances because pure substances are that in is one which is made up of only one kind of particles these may be atoms or molecules that can be separated by physical method we cannot separate that hydrogen and oxygen from water molecule okay so they are called the pure substance Uh, and uh, because they are made up of, of one kind of particles they cannot be separated by any physical method a pure substance have a fixed composition as well as fixed melting point and boiling point so compounds may be organic may be inorganic so organic generally the compounds we are getting from animals and plants they all are called organic compounds and inorganic compounds the compounds which we can make in our laboratory for our various purposes that is not present in our body in another element animals body or plants body it is not present that kind of compounds are called inorganic compounds okay so two types of compounds generally we can see for compounds organic and inorganic now i am coming to the impure substance impure substance means mixture we will say so in case of mixture the ratio of the two or more components or more substances may be same or may not be same because suppose i am telling you some of the students three or four students to i'm um, telling you that you make sugar water solution so all of you can make sugar water solution one suppose one he or she he will take that 300 ml of water and two one spoon of sugar into it the second one she can take 
500 ml of water and in here 1 spoon of or 2 spoon of sugar into it. So just like that it will depend the mass ratio between water and the sugar particles or the salt particles or any of the particles of the two components. They are not the same. You are making it is in 2 is to 1 ratio. Someone it will make 3 is to 1 ratio. Another one it will make 4 is to 1 ratio of water and sugar. That kind of ratio they can make. But they all are called mixture. So in the mixture we cannot tell that the composition of the mixture it is fixed in ratio for all. We cannot say like that but in compounds, in elements they all are in the fixed ratio. But in case of mixture the components are present they are not in fixed ratio that is why they are called the impure substances as well as mixture. Now mixture is of two types, one is heterogeneous mixture, another one is homogeneous mixture. So which one is homogeneous mixture? Homogeneous mixture, suppose in case of sugar water solution, if we want to mix sugar into some amount of water, we have to first of all we have to stir it. After some time we cannot see the sugar particles in the solution. For what reason? Because in first chapter we have discussed the characteristics of matter and in there what we have seen? We have seen that every matter there is having some space between the molecules. So the sugar particles can occupy the space among the water molecules and it will occupy the space it will attach with this space that is why we cannot see the sugar particles. In case of salt particles also we cannot see the salt particles it will be just thoroughly mixed throughout the mixture. Okay, So they are called the homogeneous mixture. But in case of heterogeneous mixture suppose in case of sand water. What are we are taking? Suppose 500 ml water we are taking and 1 spoon of or 2 gram of sand particles we are giving to it. After some time we can see that sand particles they will be settled down below the layer of the water. What is the reason for that? Because sand particles they are very large in size rather than sugar and sol uh, salt particles. So that is why they cannot dissolve in water. They cannot occupy the space of the water molecules that is the reason okay and they are called heterogeneous mixture sand water soil water you can say and heterogeneous mixture is also it is of two time one is suspension just now I have given the example sand water soil water this kind of uh, solution they are called heterogeneous mixture and colloidal mixture is another part of the heterogeneous mixture we will see we will read in details in this chapter the different kind of mixture different kind of substances but uh, just now I am just introducing this part that uh, colloidal solution like blood, like face cream, like sunscreen, like uh, you can say milk, butter, they all are called colloidal mixture because we cannot say it, it is a true solution or as well as we cannot say that it is a heterogeneous solution. True solution means homogeneous solution. So, it is looking like homogeneous but actually it is heterogeneous mixture. So we will see the characteristics of uh, colloidal particles that we can understand. So these are there that uh, the types of matter, elements, compounds and mixture in mixture two types of mixture are generally they are homogeneous and heterogeneous. This is the type of matter. So I think all of you can understand up to that. So uh, in our next class, we will study in details pure substance, impure substances and the types of matter. Okay. So, thank you.